In this video, we're going to work on this particular integral right here, and it's our first problem from the Virginia Tech Regional Map Competition on this channel. I'll be presenting a few videos on problems from this particular competition because they sort of cover a bunch of different topics from a bunch of undergraduate material. And I'll also be talking about what this contest is about in general since it's our first problem from it. So stay tuned to learn more about this particular competition, the problems on it, and how to figure out this integral. Hi, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar. This channel is dedicated to undergraduate mathematics theorems and problems for your journey through the undergraduate and to prepare you for the journey beyond. If this is your first time on the channel and this resonates with you, definitely click on the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications for future videos. And if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. Today we're gonna to work on this problem right over here that showed up on the Virginia Tech Regional Math Competition. And I wanna talk a little bit about what this competition is about. So this competition is held annually for undergraduates in the United States, and it occurs usually in the end of October. So I like to think about it as a contest as sort of like a precursor to the Putnam, which is a North America-wide mathematics competition. The competition has usually seven problems, and the difficulties sort of range um, from things that are a little bit manageable to things that might be quite um, difficult. And the content covers uh, quite a bit of material from throughout the undergraduate, including calculus, analysis, linear algebra, differential equations, and sometimes abstract algebra. Okay, today we're gonna to solve our first problem from this competition, which was on a 2019 competition is number four, and it's this integral from zero to one of x squared over the quantity x plus the square root of one minus x squared dx. So the first thing you might notice about this is because we have this quantity here, which is the square root of one minus x squared, it kind of feels like we ought to do some type of trigonometric substitution. So if we let x be, say, sine t, then we can rewrite this integral in a different form using the sine function. So our integral changes to, well, I'll leave the bounds out for now. On the numerator, we get a sine squared t. And on the denominator, we get sine t times the square root of one minus sine squared is cosine squared. So we get uh, cosine t here because we're taking the square root. And that's dt, but we need to actually do the differentiation here to substitute dx is cosine t, uh, cosine t dt, so we'll get a cosine t over here. Now what about the bounds? So when x is 0, t is going to be 0, and when x is 1, t is going to be pi over 2. Now there are other angles that give the same bounds here, but we kind of know that it has to be in this range because of the fact that we have this quantity right over here. Okay, so that's another way to write down our integral. Um, and when you look at it, it doesn't seem like it's a manageable integral at face value. Um, so let's investigate a little bit more. We chose to do the substitution sine t. We could have instead chosen to substitute cosine t. right? So let's see what happens if we do that. So I'll write down here x equals cosine t instead. Uh, the reason to suggest even trying to do that is, well, we're probably going to have some type of integrand that's similar to this, but a little bit off. And maybe we can play with the two um, and see what happens. Okay, so if we do that, when x is 0, we'll have a pi over 2 over here. And when x is 1, we have 0 over here. Okay, um, now if we actually do the, the substitution, the numerator we get cosine squared t, uh, and then we have a cosine t here, and the square root of one minus cosine squared is sine squared, and then we take, uh, this, because we're taking the square root, it'll be sine, um, and we'll have dt, but then we need to differentiate with respect to x here to do the substitution, and we'll get negative sine. I'm gonna write just sine, the negative will actually switch the bounds of this integral to be 0 to pi over 2. Okay, 
So here are two different representations of the integral using these two substitutions. Now, there's something really advantageous here if we take a look. Okay, so now let's try to put these two together. Um, so we notice we have this sine t, cosine t factor in each of these uh, numerator of both of these. And here, if we factor that out, we'd have a sine t, and here if we factor that out, we'd have a cosine t. So if we added these, we get a sine t plus cosine t in the numerator with that cosine t sine t as a factor. Um, and that'll eliminate with the denominators, which are the same, both being sine t plus cos t. So, in other words, if we added these two things together, we get that twice the integral is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the only thing that remains, which is sine t cos t dt. Okay, and now we have an integral that we can try to solve using more standard techniques. Now, there are several ways to solve this. I'll do another substitution. If we let x be sine t, then dx is cosine t dt. And so our integral here becomes the integral from uh, 0 to 1 of x dx. And that is the evaluation from 0 to 1 of x squared over 2, which is a half. And so our integral is 1 fourth. Okay, cool. So the idea was to exploit trigonometric substitution in two different ways that allowed for this nice symmetric way of representing the integral that got us to add the two different representations to get twice the integral being a much more manageable uh, thing to integrate. Great, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications on future videos.